right, hopefully the audio isn't absolutely atrocious with the air conditioner on, because it's still kind of hot. Um, let's just move this biscuit out of the way. Nobody, nobody needs that. All right, so basically, I have no idea what graphics card I'm going to be purchasing. There are many, many, many options, and like I said, I have no idea what I'm going to get. Um, right now, we don't know if the Founders Edition cards will work properly and cool optimally in a you know sandwich layout case like the Ghost or the the Form DT1 stuff like that. So basically, uh, I got a little test bench. So. Maybe you already saw this on YouTube, maybe you already saw this online, I have no idea. But, yeah, it's, it's basically it. So, I'm going to open this up, I'm going to install it, well, I guess, set it up, and then I'm going to install my parts onto it. And then, I won't be limited to, oh, do we know if, uh what's coming Zen 3 like do you need PCIe 4.0 for 3090 is does it performance actually 5% less does RTX IO not work as well if you don't have a 3090 and you don't have PCIe Gen 4.0 I don't know uh, the point is uh, even if I had it set up I still don't have a PCIe Gen 4 riser cable so that's that's another thing so to ensure that I have no issues initially uh, and I don't have to rush out and go buy something got a little test bench so yeah uh, hopefully the audio is fine I, I really have no idea so let, let, let the room get like you know like a little bit cooler and I'll turn it off and I'll fix up the audio but I'll jump over to this gotta get my little switchblade Over here I have my laptop, I was looking at temperatures for how much load can a 240mm copper EK rad handle, uh, how much can a Hardware Labs uh, GTS 280 rad handle, uh, just, just different radiator configurations. If I go with a a dual rad setup and I probably want a winter one but like I said we'll see right now everything's on air I don't want to go out and buy water blocks until like I have to and we still don't even know when water blocks will be out so if you want an EVGA card the 4 to win 3 there's no point in me buying a water block unless I'm going to buy the 3 8 pin card so you can overclock it more so yeah, I mean, these are some pretty good instructions. It's funny. It actually looks like the same style type of box that the T1 comes in. It's just like a little flat pack box, and then, you know, you, uh, you know, you just, you just put it together. I mean, this one at least comes out with printed instructions, so it's not somebody stuttering for probably hours on end trying to figure out how to get it to work. I could build a T1 way faster now, because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing with this. So, we got, oh, dude, it comes with gloves. I didn't even need gloves. That's nice, that's nice. The only problem is these gloves look like they're made for children. See that? Not going to fit my hands. Yes. Kid hands. But it's nice, I, I appreciate the gesture. They got those, uh, you know, ghost feet I wanted. This is probably what you use them out the power supply. This thing is literally just. Yeah, bro, this thing is cheap, but if it works, it works. You know what I'm saying? If it works, it works. Wow, it actually comes with a power button. Wow. You know, this is actually everything you need. Wow, it's actually like an actual test bench. And then this is what holds the GPU. Screw it in. Anyway, I probably don't need all of this yet. So, 
I'll, I'll, actually, I'll just take everything out anyway. Uh, obviously, not the gloves. They don't fit, so I can't use them at all anyway. We got some aluminum standoffs, I guess. And then we got the main two sides, like this. And you put it together. I guess it's just patience, just patience. All right. First D1, we need three if we're doing an ITX, two for a 310 mil. I think 310 mil would be what, an ATX motherboard? Honestly, I have no idea, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's, let's cut this stuff off first. Hopefully everything's in frame. Yeah, it's it's a decently in frame. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Same with this one. The uh, all black one is actually a bit more expensive, so I didn't order that one. It also wouldn't get here in like two days. It was gonna take like three weeks. I mean, I don't hate the, the red and black, so why wait? And why pay more? If it's $10 less, it does the same thing. Okay, so it's just showing all the parts which I do know, I mean, it came with all the parts, I hope so. All right, so we need to take the uh, Q2 and Q2 to the P1. All right, all right. I should probably rip these pages apart, but I don't want to, it's like nice. <sighs> Q2, aluminum square profile nut. It's funny because Q2 and Q3 are exactly the same. Look at it. See that? Q2 and Q3, literally exactly the same. I might actually be using my Bluetooth headphones for the mic. I I'm not sure. I'm wearing it sometimes, but I always feel like it uses the mic on the camera anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to soon install this, you know. I know these are little feet you put on all of the ends of, I believe, the red. Just like that. You can do this as the last step. I, I doubt it interferes with anything, to be honest with you. You know, this probably does interfere with something because you probably have to slide stuff onto here and then at the end you latch stuff on. Uh, I have no idea, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So, more stuff, labels, Just take everything out of this. One of the stickers has already fallen off. It belongs to something, it says, uh, Q08, so right now one of these things are unlabeled, Q08. Uh, I'm going to assume it's this one bag that's the only one missing a sticker. Yeah, so I'm going to just stick this sticker on. And we'll just flip back the page and double check. Q08, 2.5 SSD screws. I think it's that screw. I'll show you. Eight. 
and this is the screws. Okay. Uh, we got everything. We got everything. Okay. So I need Q2, Q2 to P1. We got a lot of Q2s and Q3s. Stickers on the same bag, so no worries there. Install Q2 and Q2 to P1. P1 is uh, P1. P1 is the L corner bracket things. All right, this this is a P1. All right, so Q2, Q2. Okay, so so you put a Q2 on each end of this, and then you take a Q5 and attach it to a D2. Dude, it's like playing Battleship. All right, all right, I got this. All right, you get two Q2s. All right, I got two Q2s. And now you place two Q2s on the outside of this. Now I just don't know which end is the correct end. The flat end or the rounded edge goes on the outside. I have no idea, so we'll see. One of them only is to install on one side as shown in the picture. Install P1 to D2. Insert Q2 into the D2 groove and move to the appointed location and then tighten with Q5. Q5 are these screws right here. Q5. Alright, so it's not that bad really. You just, uh, you know, drop some of these squares into the groove, screw it in, tighten it, done. It's, it's not that complicated. So we'll do one end first. Q2, two screws, and then lock them in place. Okay, so you're putting two L brackets on each P1. P1 is um, the L bracket. And then you're taking two P1s onto one D2, this is a D2. So two P1s onto one D2. So there will be six P1s Okay, okay, I take that back. There, there will be four P1s utilized. That's step three. I'm jumping ahead. Let's just get one set up so then, you know, everybody's brain can process this. Okay, so that goes in there, that goes in there, that goes in there. One second, maybe I could just screw this in, like this first, and then slide it in. Come on, you can do it. Go in there. People got the lives and things to do, so just nothing for them. So this L shape P1 is on the D1, and I attach the Q2 to the P1, and I'm tightening, I'm fastening the Q2 to the P1 on the D2 with a Q5, yeah, with a Q5. Okay. Go to the other edge. Is it the same thing or a different angle? Yeah, they're both facing the same angle. Okay, so same thing. I need another P1. 
key one. P one goes into a Q five is going into a P one, which is going into a Q two. And just to screw this on. Now I'm gonna lock this into place on the D two. No, my bad. Yeah, it is. It's a D two. Yeah. Okay, so now that's on. And I'm going to put it on this side right here. Slide it into place. All right, great. Hmm. I need a screwdriver. All right, one sec. All right, I still haven't ordered the electric screwdriver. I was hoping for a sale. I, I don't want to buy the $25 or $28 kit and then end up buying the uh, $25 additional uh, heads or whatever set attachment and then comes out to more uh, so my friend told me I missed the sale the whole thing with the set was like 28 bucks I mean it is what it is you know if, if the AC wasn't on ruining the microphone quality the electric screwdriver would be making coil wine noises going so and you know you can't win you know to be honest, I have no idea how bad it would actually be. I'm just, you know, projecting? Yeah, I think the phrase is projecting. I think this, this header is actually a little bit too small for it. I don't think I have a bigger one, so. Let me make it work. Alright, so remember P1, Q5 attached to a Q2 onto a D2. Alright, once I got next up. Wow, you actually have to put three. Wow, okay, so I have to use five P1s. That's a lot, man. This really is just adult Legos. Like, that's all this is. Adult Legos. They want you to set up all the D2s first, and then you touch the D1s. D1 is the big red bars. These are D2s. Secondary. So, they just want you to get all these uh, brackets set up first just so it's easier. Uh, I can do it, I can do it. Just making sure I got everything in place. Yeah, I got everything in place. I actually need two more on those ends, but I'm gonna do that once I attach the other bars because right now I can't, I can't do it. Five latches on which side do I want on? This one has a scratch on it, so I'm gonna make it latch on like this so the scratch is not visible. Yeah, you see that? Not perfect machining on a $39 test bench. There was tax, so it's more than $39, it was 42 36 or something like that. I should probably be trying to set this up with the end with the least scratches facing the top, but honestly, I don't think any of you care, so. You're not gonna notice it. Only thing you care about is if there's a GPU on there. And a CPU, and a motherboard. You know, that's pretty much it. It goes just like this, it goes into the middle, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go gentle, I'll go gentle, let's just tighten this, yeah that's fine, 
doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll fix it later. And then the last D2, you attach the same thing as you did on the first one. I'm actually going to set it up properly, just because I don't really want to uh, forget and then have to go back to the page for a step. So I will be attaching the Q5 to the Q2s on the P1. And when I was a kid, there was this kid on my street. Well, it was actually the neighboring street, not my street. And um, he went to hobby shop and his mom took him there. And she got him one of those like archaeologist kits where you get like a little like little shovel and then you get like a little brush and then you dig inside a box for like fossils and it's supposed to replicate like you're an archaeologist and I remember he was playing with it on the street like when we were playing basketball after basketball before the sun was setting completely and it was actually really cool like you'd find like these like little bones and stuff it was actually really cool I remember when I was a kid I went to the Natural History Museum and all that like it was amazing like yeah, every floor you went on is like totally different I have to double check if Lucy was the first human ancestor that we linked back to the monkeys and us. That's why they made that movie, but um, I'll have to double check if the name was actually Lucy because I remember seeing that, but I just don't remember the name anymore. And I don't want to be quoting a movie. But yeah, puzzles and stuff are cool. I mean, the regular jigsaw puzzles are kind of lame. I mean, I mean, they're okay, they just take a lot of time. I don't really find them that much fun. Sudoku's kind of fun. Those Brain Age games on the DS used to be pretty fun too. Yeah, I'm just reading the instructions again. I need two more. P ones to attach onto the D2. Is it invisible over here? Yeah, you can see it's fine. I have no idea or date I'll upload this, but the RTX series uh, cards, the new 3000 look kind of nice, you know, they look, they look pretty nice. Hopefully none of the performance benchmark numbers are lies and the numbers are actually what they are. As of today, the 3080 is not two times better than a 2080, I mean it's like 60%, but it's just at 4K, but it's not two times better. So we'll, we'll see if those driver optimizations, you know, come into play. Somebody was saying things about how Ampere's CUDA cores are different than 
Terrain Screw to Quarters and it handles integer and floating point calculations differently. Um, I'm not an expert on that, so I really can't explain it to you properly. But stay tuned for the bench parts, you know. And you'll you know, you can go based off that. But as you can see, it's supposed to be spaced out more, but D2, 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 P1, 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 Q5, 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 and then you have Q2, 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 Q2. Yeah. By the way, that's all step one. See ya. All step one. Now we're going on to step two. Step two. Okay. We're gonna be attaching the D1 onto the left side and we're gonna be installing the Q3 which is the same thing as the Q2 which there's really no point in make it in another main you know. and you're going to use two Q5s and you're going to screw that onto the D1 in the middle of the D2 and the part that you're installing is a P4, and this is the P4. That's what the part looks like. Just gonna double check, confirm that. Apparently, there's two of them aluminum profile mounted plate. There actually are two of these. Just so you know, you guys see this. I don't know if this is aluminum. It definitely looks like acrylic to me. But as you can see, P4, and it comes with two of them. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's that's not aluminum. That's that's acrylic. But anyway, so you have to install Okay, so the P4s are actually used to attach the D1s onto the D2 bars. So, yeah. And that requires two Q2s, two, two, Q5s, You definitely don't want to put these rubbers on. They're not even rubbers, they're just plastic, plastic to protect you from hitting the edge, but anyway, you gotta manage this in here somehow. Alright there, and then I'll screw that one in, but that one's in place. to adhere this one to this one somehow and same thing on this one but I have no idea how I would oh okay okay I, I got this. this that one came off unfortunately so okay so this one's on this one's on I'm just gonna tighten it at the edge That one's good. Good to the edge on this one. That one's good. And I'm gonna just slide 
probably just one in place. That one's good. Screw this one in place. Might be a little bit too tight. Alright, but that one's good. And same thing on this one. Let's just screw that one into place, not too tight. That one's good. Right, so this one's still moving. One second. This one is giving me some attitude. This one's actually being really annoying. Alright, that one's that one's better now. Alright, they're both they're both good. Now it's just the D2. But as you can see, this is actually coming together. It's actually really small. It looked a lot bigger when I looked at it online. Um, I'm really glad I didn't order the ATX one. I saw the one Optum Tech uses, that one's like $200 and I'd have to wait and it comes from like the Netherlands or something. The, uh, it's not rose gold, but there's like this red color for it, red silver it's called, it's really nice. But what is nice about that one is if you want to attach ATX motherboards or whatever, they just have standoffs that are like pop in, pop out, and free shipping from the Netherlands, so I, I do appreciate that a lot. Shipping is probably like 40 bucks for like half the things, so. Probably the worst thing to pay shipping on is anything from Alpha Cool. $55 for literally anything. And it's 55 euro, not, not dollars. I'll have to double check on that. But yeah, it's a lot of money. God forbid you, you realize you forgot to order a fitting. Or your pump dies and you have to order another one. I can understand why they're not allowed to sell all-in-ones in America, but... I mean, they, they could sell stuff on Amazon. Like fittings, uh, the radiators. I, I know PPCS, Performance PCs. Yeah, they, they sell some stuff. They're from Florida. Um, I've never ordered anything from Aqua Tuning, so I have no idea, but I, I know they sell things as well. I usually just try to order my stuff off Amazon. It's, it's easy. I'm just a little confused on this one part, but I know I attach two of these through this little acrylic thing, but it's just, can I pull this off? Does it look better? No, there's, there's no way to pull this off. It doesn't matter. And actually, there, there's probably a way to pull this off. It's okay if I mess this up, I can uh, put it on the bottom side so none of you guys can see it. You know, maybe it doesn't come off. So we're, we're definitely putting that all on the bottom side now. And so, two of these screws go through this. And then the nuts go on top. Okay, okay, okay. I just couldn't 
process this. So this goes like this. As you can see, it just slides like that. I'm pretty sure you need a third one because, as you can see, that's how this will latch onto this. I hope that is correct. I mean, it has to be. How else would it attach? You would need a third one, and it's saying repeat the technique you did before, so it's the only way that it would attach. Now, I'm going to take this. Should have actually just done all three the first time, but it's okay. Makes it a lot easier when I do it the second time. Now you take this, slide this on. I'll do it like this so you guys can see it. Basically, you just slide that on. If it lets you. Okay, there it's on, and now I'm just going to drop that, and that definitely seems wrong, yeah, uh, I have no idea how this is going to work, I mean, oh, you attach the feet at the bottom and then everything is raised, okay, that makes sense. That's pretty much all step two is, and then step three is uh, pretty much the same thing on the other side. And then uh, it looks like you are attaching some of the standoffs onto the middle plate, the middle D2. See, it's starting to actually look like an actual test bench. side faces up so you know, just to remain consistent I'll have the side with less of these green marks whatever facing up and I just need to 
pass and the Q2, Q3s onto the Q5. And as you can see, I am struggling. To be honest, it's, it's only hard because I have these gloves on. It's just like the edges is, uh, it's not my actual fingers, just like rubber getting caught on there. Install that one backwards. And that one's on properly. And this one's on properly. Okay. So if you can see that. Q2, Q3, same thing. Q5 is a screw. P4 is the uh, acrylic. All you do is you slide it onto the other side. So I would um, do that like this. Please just go on. All right, and then thank you. And other one won't go on because this is in the way, so I'm just gonna sacrifice it. This one should go on. Okay, so we're good. And this one goes here, and then now I'm gonna screw this to this. Ooh, that's tricky. How am I gonna how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? Okay, 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 I can do this, I can do this. It's gonna be tricky, but I can do it. Actually messed up. I actually messed up. This one came off while I was doing that one, and that other one came off while I was doing this one. Wow, this is this is just pain. It's just pain. I messed up like four steps. We've regressed in progress. Okay, this one's good. This one's good. And. I gotta do this part again. Slide that on just a little bit. I have to slide these two on again properly if it behaves. All right, so one's on, two on. Two are on the rails. I take this, I put this like this. It's hovering right above it. Put this one through that one, screw it in. Hopefully it connects and reaches. I doubt it will. You know what? You know what? We're not gonna mess that up, but it worked. And same thing, just tighten the one in the middle. All right, D2s are attached and we got sliding rails. All right, so this one has to go in the middle somehow. I have no idea what the middle is, but we will figure it out eventually. Of course, the end that... Dude, there's something definitely on me even on this, because... The aluminum frame on one side is... I just have to tighten this one. Yeah, yeah, I can get this to work. Don't worry, don't worry. It'll be, it'll be acceptable once this is done. All right, we're on step three now, unless I missed something. But if you look at it, can you see this? Yeah, you can see it, we'll, we'll zoom in. You can't see anything with that zoom. So basically this was, this was step two. D1, D2, 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 you install on this side, and the same thing on this side. And then I have to do this part, which is kind of wonky. And then you can see you gotta install like these little standoff things. So we'll do that as well. Oh, this is 44 minutes already? So... 
That part that's going to be installed is a Q1, which is this. So, yeah, yeah those are definitely motherboard standoffs. Alright, so, I have not completely fastened this stuff, but should be fine. Insert Q1 components onto D1 and D2. As shown in second step, fix another piece onto D1. got bad news. You were supposed to install these before you attach this. So I gotta do this again. Look how that's beautiful. To be honest, after that you're basically done. So it's really not that brutal. It sucks, but it's just not that brutal. to set up four of these but it includes five so it's a bit um, confusing but it definitely seems like the RTX motherboard gets set up on this bottom portion the ATX power I mean the power supply goes on that side so yeah power supply on the board GP would write it yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes sense That's three of them, and the last one. Alright, so this is what all four look like. This is Q1. So yeah, that's what your motherboard gets installed onto. And this is the stuff that I messed up. 
so this has to be off and then what you do is you slide those on and I can't slide that on if the rubbers are on I can't slide that, those three on if this is attached so pain I'm starting to doubt myself here. This cannot be held. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I just have to make sure my brain is firing on all cylinders here because I, I don't think it is. there and the standoff lines off with this row. Wait, so you're telling me this doesn't go with the complete edge? You're joking. There's no way I can gauge that exact distance. So somehow this, this is actually not supposed to go at the bottom edge. So somehow it's actually supposed to go a little bit above. And then somehow you just happen to wing it and, and you get those so line, which is complete bullshit. But it's not like it comes with a ruler that you know that that lines up with that. It's, these are supposed to be an ITX motherboard distance, but there, there's, there's no way I would know this without taking an ITX motherboard and putting it on top. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no way I would know that. The rest of this is pretty much install a power supply and then build the rest of your PC, which is a joke. But here's the only thing. There's no way I can gauge. Hold on, let me let me make sure this makes sense. Look, it doesn't it doesn't tell me. There's no indentation. Is that an inch? Is that half an inch? Is that two centimeters or three centimeters? So. You know, until I put my motherboard on there, I have no idea. So. I'll do the same thing, by the way. Leave timestamps and you can fast forward. You, you don't have to sit through all of it. sacrifice one in. I'm going to slide on the components that I have to. So that should be a deer. This is on. And that never latched on so I just wasted my time. This is interfering. Now both of these are off. This is still attached to the bottom. And this is a beautiful situation. Okay, so this is actually on this time. I'm sliding it over here and it's held on by two. And we're just gonna move this over here. So this is that whole side's held on, right? On this side, I have to slide on. I don't want to do that. 
I'm gonna have to do it, right? So I have to slide these on, right? Yep, gonna have to do it again. Maybe I can just barely. Hold on, hold on. so many things wrong right now. This shouldn't even be like this. I might have flipped while I was doing stuff, but that's not even supposed to be like that. And... Wow, okay. One sec. I don't know why I would tell you to install that. I know it goes here, I don't know how he might have flipped over while I was doing something and I just tightened it in there which made it tricky so these are proper these are proper this has to stick out this way so this has to latch in this way so that actually has to slide in so there's definitely no way I could have done this without taking it actually apart so let's slide that there and now, screw this part in. Hopefully that makes contact somehow. improper. No, that one's improper, that motherboard standoff, and this one's supposed to be the opposite direction. It's not going in. Alright, so these are the motherboard standoffs. So, one, two, in that direction, nice. This one's upside down like that. And then the other one will be like this. Alright, great. And this lines up with that one, so we'll manage. But this is on, this is flipped upside down, but this is supposed to be like this. I have no idea what the middle is, but you can screw this in. Hold its position. It's kind of wonky, but it is what it is. Let's slide this one on. Slide this on, nice. Now this last part has to slide on, but I'm pretty sure that's the last part. Okay, so all of the parts should be on properly. Alright, I'm gonna screw it all in. So these are the motherboard standoffs, and then this is these line up like this. Obviously this is incorrect, so this would slide up a bit more, so that'd be smaller, and then this would be like this, and then the edge is probably your section for the GPU. So, but that's basically it, yeah, so screw that in. Um, what part do I screw first? Alright, so I'll do this top part right here first.
not going to screw it in like super tight because I'm not 100% sure on where it locks. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to look something like this. Something like this. So this is your motherboard standoffs. They go like this. Basically, I mean, if I'm going by my memory and my eye, it looks something like that. So, let's just screw that in place. Screw this one in place. Yeah, alright, so that looks like everything quickly show. Motherboard standoffs, 1, 2, P4. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it looks good. So now it is installing Q3 and Q6 to P3. Uh, four sets, and then you install each P3 onto the bottom of the D1, and then you tighten the Q6. So the Q3 is that same little fastener thing. Uh, feet D1 is the long frame so you literally just take the feet fastener Q6 is the screw done you're just screwing feet on it's not, not rocket science so this is a Q9 this is a, a Q9 it's a Q6 and it comes with four one, two, three, five. All right, so it comes with five. Probably if you misplace one. So we're just gonna take out four of those. It comes with four feet. No replacement. Oh, they look aluminum. They're just plastic. They look like the aluminum ones people get. No, they're, they're just plastic, dude. It, it's like, it's like, it's, it's plastic. Yeah. I, I thought they were like the nice ones. Those are like 20 bucks or 15 bucks. Um, Q2, Q3 is right. You need four of them. Okay, so you put it on the bottom, obviously, slide them on, but with the which direction? The rubber end touches the ground, obviously, right? Scratch my desk, holds in place. Okay. Okay, so now fastener goes onto the rail, screw through the hole. Okay, so pop it like this. So you drop it in like that. And then you fasten it on. Alright, that's one done. Drop it again. So actually, you don't want to flip these you want them like this and you just drop the screws through that one's dropped in same thing this one drop that one in and fasten it Those are all four feet, and now you uh, just pretty much slide them onto the bottom. There should be no interference on any of the rails because you've done all the steps before this properly. Now, and hopefully, everything doesn't slide while I'm trying to get this on. Now, this might actually be a little bit too. Loosen it a bit. Yeah, this is definitely one of those things that I'm definitely not dismantling. And if I do dismantle it, then I don't want to reassemble it. I didn't mess up anything, right? Yeah, but I definitely see the appeal to that street street home. That street home one. That one's like two hundred bucks, but I think you just it's it's just it's already you know you just fold it 
push pins for most of the stuff. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty nice to be honest with you. You wouldn't have to be doing all this, but that one also is five times the price of this. So, I mean, but that one is for ATX motherboards as well. So, I'm not gonna just pass it off like. They make an ITX one, I think, as well, but it's 179, so um, I said five times, right? So that's four and a half times? Yeah, it should be four and a half times. Yeah, uh, two feet on this end. This looks good. Screw this foot in. It's on, right? Yep, that foot's on too. And then this last foot. Okay, one second. One second. Work with me. I have no idea why it's so tight. Okay. No, I, I have. I have no idea actually why it's so tight on this side. Oh wow, it actually peeled some aluminum off. Maybe it's a, it's a little bit too tight. Yeah, it's really tight. All right, calm, calm down. You don't gotta be that tight. Just calm down. Do you put it to feet at the edges? No, the feet are like kind of like not like the edges just a little bit down I guess that way you can't see the feet and it still looks nice and it still holds up the stand I'm putting it mm, I'll show you I'll show you just two seconds It's fine. It's, it's, it's adequate. Yeah. I definitely messed something up. One of the rails just came off. One of the rails just came off, and I don't know where it's from. These two are good. It's this one. It's this one. How do I attach this back on? Because it's slow. Oh, wow. Look at you. Look at this one with some attitude. Alright, that one's in. Alright, that one's on. Okay. And then... Oh, this, this wasn't supposed to slide. Like, at all, actually. Okay. It's about right. You can always adjust it later on to make it perfect. This... Am I doing something wrong here? Is this, is this really just meant to fall like that? You don't attach any other... I guess you just tighten it so tight it doesn't fall, but it's not that stable. I mean, I figured that you'd use two L bracket, two more L brackets, and you put it like that. But these L brackets are probably going to be used for the uh, I have no idea. It has to be used for something else. These two L brackets are used for attaching a hard drive, but to me it would make more sense if you attach these two L brackets and help hold this up. Because I mean, this is 
Maybe I just gotta tighten it more, it's fine. But yeah, that, that's pretty much, we're, we're, we're getting there, we're almost done. This is still on, right? Yep. So we did this, installing, installing the feet, and now this is for your GPU. If you have a three slot GPU, you're only gonna be attaching and endearing it to this test bench with two of the support beams, you're not gonna be using three. So, I mean, it, it's fine, don't, don't worry about it. It's still better than those cardboard box builds. Uh, P2. P2 is this. It's not labeled, but this is the P2. And then we have this wonky little acrylic. That is D3. And then we want Q5, we want two of them. And Q3, we want two of them. Yeah, that's actually not that bad. All right. I'm assuming these two screws are used to fasten the GPU onto these. Actually, I have no idea. It doesn't say what to do with those because these screws on top, I'm pretty sure these are screws, right? Yeah, these are what fasten it onto the GPU, so. What? It's not telling me to use these screws. It is, actually. You put them on the bottom, and then the Q5s are attaching this onto the side of the, onto the side of the, uh, the rails. D1. So Q5 is meant to attach with two Q3s onto the P1. Right. So this goes like Wait, how is this possible? You're supposed to just attach two giant screws to these Okay, whatever, that's weird. There is play, that, that's why it was confusing to me, but that's what they say to do, so, play. Fell, so, one second. And then all you do is you slide this onto the edge. The edge by the motherboard, obviously, not the uh, other end. The other end is where you're going to be putting a power supply. And so that goes like that. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to going to want to take these two screws and the washers. It doesn't show the washers on the manual, but you know I'm just going to put it on the bottom of these. Should be fine. So we attach this. This. Just get on there. Same thing with this one. Okay, that's good. And I want this to get. Good. Screw one of these. Reminds me of those uh, the NASCAR drivers when they're like screwing on the, the tires when they have to do the tire swaps. All right, so this is one. This is. Uh, Looking more like a test bench. It's, it's actually really small. It's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, so you're gonna have enough space at the end for this. I don't need a hard drive uh, mount. So if if you guys need this, 
you do this step. I'm not doing this. I'm not mounting a hard drive on the side of this line. Imagine booting your top. Oh, I guess you could use it for games, but probably going to need SSD soon. So. so step six, we have to install the power supply. So this is a D4. Now we're going to use the Q4 screws to attach this with the Q3 onto the D1. I'm going to put the nice side on the outside, not this trademark side I've got. Um, what is nice is this is actually a red acrylic, so that's cool. I just don't know why this cardboard is here. If I could pull it off, it'd be cool, but I tried. It, it doesn't... So you want Q4, two of them, it gives you three. It's nice of them. You want two Q3s. Want. That's it. Okay. So this end like this. Fasten. If this thing was fully built, I wonder if shipping would probably make it cost like eighty bucks. It'd be nice because you wouldn't have to spend probably three hours assembling it, but. Then again, you're never going to have to assemble this again once it's done, so... I mean, it, it is fun. That's just part of, you know, puzzles and all that. So this probably goes at the leftmost edge. And then now I'll screw this in. And that looks good. Yeah, it looks good, it's fine. Um, please don't screw Q3 too tightly, which on D4, P4 areas, adjust them when motherboard and power supply are installed. Well, I did screw it in pretty tightly, and if the acrylic snaps, then we all laugh, right? So. So, it's just enough that it's on, but, you know, it can move a little bit. So they, they want you to have that little bit of play to fine tune it. But now we're on step six, I mean seven. Fixing the D4, so now it actually wants to be installed like a real PC onto this. Yeah. They want you to, to install a power supply. And that's like really the last page, you're just installing your actual PC onto this. Can you see that? Power supply, blah, 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 blah. Um, I do have an ATX power supply that I could use, um, but I'm not going to do that, no, no, so. I'll install, like, my real PC parts on this, and, like I said, that's kind of the whole point of this. And the ATX power supply that I have is six, only 650 watts, not a 750, which I need. Back with the power supply. Um, I don't know if it gives me power supply screws because I don't remember actually where I put my power supply screws. It actually gives you power supply screws. That's Q9. Oh, these are some wonky power supply screws. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's it's all good. We were saved. The power of China. Alright, so let's get two of those. I actually have no idea what this is for, so if I miss a step, we can laugh. We can laugh later on. I probably didn't miss a step because I've been showing everything I've been doing with the manual right after I do it. So the power supply and I don't think it really matters, it's just the fan would face this way or the other way. 
Um, does it matter actually? Well, this shit does not fit. It's so small. How am I gonna? Wait, hold on, hold on. Wait. How is this gonna align? How is this even possible? One goes in here, one goes there. No, I know it goes vertically, but... Is that seriously fit? Sorry if my head's getting in the way, I'm just trying to understand. It's just, with the ATX power supply, it takes up the whole width. Okay, yeah, that's actually the correct way to do it. You put it all the way into the leftmost edge on the rail, right? So that looks perfect. And then this should go in perfect. And then... I can't see, so one second. Gotta <sighs> love those non-magnetic screwdrivers. Just, just one second. Let me just screw this in, then I'll show. Oh, okay. Now I see why they give you play. falling over. Once I get one of them in like, and it screws in, I should be fine. It should be a lot easier. Alright, so I gripped onto one of them and just have to do the same thing on this other side. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not working. Yeah, I have no idea how somebody is supposed to not do these screws. It, it's, it's not going to go in. Unless you do this really wonky way of doing it, but it's so stupid. Can't be really designed like this. <sighs> One second. Okay. Wow, it actually holds pretty well. Okay. Um, let's see if you can see this. You can see this. So you put one screw all the way in there. These go onto the rail, and then this. It, it looks wonky. It looks very wonky, if you can see that. It's literally held on by the edge, and that one goes in full. Like, it sits in there. But yeah, uh, this flipped and it wasn't supposed to flip. One second. Okay. If I rest it on the feet, then that helps it stay up properly. Maybe you use the feet to help it sit properly. But yeah, this is this is looking pretty good. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, this is in tightly. These are in tightly. Okay, so that's good. This GPU part is kind of rattly. I don't want it to do any damage, so I'd rather just screw those in properly. And then when I actually install a graphics card, I don't mind it moving. But that's pretty much 
that. What are you doing now? I need a motherboard. Q1 padded screw. Q1 padded screw. Oh, that already came with it. Those are the those installed the motherboard. It's an ITX motherboard, so you only need four screws, not nine. Like an ATX? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Didn't realize it was still zoomed in. Alright, so I'll get my motherboard. I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back. I got my motherboard. I didn't take off my water cooler. I don't believe that this ITX board has an ability to hold the rad on the side, so it's just going to be on the desk. So, hmm, think, think, think. I mean, I pretty much just have to screw in the motherboard and then make sure it's adhered properly onto this wonky rails, which, nah, I was gonna jinx myself and say it'd be funny if I broke my motherboard, but I'd probably cry, so no, we're not, we're not gonna, not gonna make jokes like that. I can't have my PC parts die, not before I upgrade, no. Can't have that. It would be the worst thing ever. Now I'm wondering if I should screw this in completely. Because on the bottom part it's not screwed in completely and then it just keeps spinning. Does it tighten? Alright, we're good. It does tighten completely. Uh, so there was a bit of concern there. Okay, well, that one doesn't seem like it's tightening. Or is it? Well, shit. Nope, this one is not tightening, so... Basically, this is the thing. For the motherboard standoffs, if you don't screw these in completely, like this, then it rattles, so. That one's obviously easy, so no complaints. This one actually went on perfectly, it's just, this one is not, so. I just don't want to have to take it off again. Oh, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm literally blessed. I, I just kept tightening it, and it tightened. We're good, we're good. Let's see if I can do it for this one as well. If not, it's fine. Three out of four is not bad. Okay. So those are four. That's on. Just keep screwing. And then somehow, I have no idea how this is latching on to anything to cause this to tighten, but it is, and it's almost working. Come on, come on, just, come on, just work, I, I don't want to take it off. It's fine, it's fine, I'll just, I'll just take it off. Don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up, I don't want to use it. This one is, uh, it seems like it almost worked, but it didn't, or just a little bit. But yeah, that's, that's on tight now, so slide that back on, that's that, yeah, okay. Now I just have to get the motherboard positioning properly. Um, 
don't think it gives you a distance. You can shove this far, as far as it can go forward. That's complete bullshit. Yep, that is... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I actually get upset. Dude, what nonsense. That's complete... Okay. Alright, so look look at this, look at this, because um, that that's complete BS. So we're, we're going to go to step um, two, right? So, step, no, no. We're going to go to step three when you're installing the motherboard standoffs. Now look at this. Step three. Standoff is on the left side. Standoff is on the right side. Standoff is here, and then this is on the right side. This mirrors this. This is on the left side. Pay attention. We're looking at step four, right? On the left, right, mirror this one. But look, they're the opposite. Oh, look at look at step six. Um, so somehow you were supposed to flip this even though you screwed this on there. Yeah. And um, let's just look at step seven real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. That That's not possible, by the way. Because you have to slide this off. And um, your motherboard won't go on because you didn't, you didn't flip it. Real quick, real quick, we're, we're just gonna go back to step three so you can see it again. How is this installed? When you tighten it and you go to step four, you cannot remove D1 from D2, D2, D2. Look at it, opposites, flipped. Do it again. Why, why would they even do that? Why would they even do that? Why would they even do that? Alright, this is only two rails. That's not that much pain. Now this... Oh, okay. Now this this is actually terrible. There's three rails holding. There's six rails on the bottom of this right now. So the smart way to do this is to unscrew this. But I can't do it now because I have this giant power supply in the way. So I have this adapter, hopefully. Now this is skinny enough to probably reach. It is. Luckily, I didn't screw it in super tight, so I can slide this bar. Now we're going to... The feet interfere. So I have to unscrew the feet on the right side as well to flip this. Real quick before I do that, I'm going to just triple check that my motherboard doesn't fit. And, and, I, and I tried installing it and it didn't work just now. So. We'll try it. Maybe I can just move it over. Like, you know, how would that make any difference? But maybe it's more secure when it's on the edges like that. One second. I obviously want it perfect if I'm never going to do this again. Which I never will. I'm probably going to have one of my Intel systems. Honestly, if I don't... What month is this? September, right? Yeah, if, if Zen 3 really does come out next month, then I'll just build a new case with Zen. Because I don't have to rebuild my PC. And you don't really have to rebuild your PC, but you get what I'm saying. You just don't want to do it again. Okay. This is like this. Slide this up. Slide up. Slide up. Slide up. Come on, behave. 
like this. And we're gonna try to mount. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Now I finally understand why that other one's supposed to be there, that other rail. So screw in the other power supply, I think. Is that meant for that? It's meant to support the weight of the power supply. Ah, okay, that's that's a genius. Alright, that makes sense now. Okay. Try one more time. This goes like this. This will go like this. This. This will line up like that one. Alright. And then this one, move it over a bit. Okay, so those two are lining up, and then how in the world is that supposed to line up? Okay, so. My f main focus should be this one, all the way to the left. All right, yeah. And then this one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We can make this work. We can make this work. There's no reason to get upset. Don't worry, don't worry. There's no reason to get upset. We can get this work. This one lines up, this one lines up, this one isn't straight because this isn't even straight. Here we get this straight on the bar, come on back up. Okay, so that one's on. Move this rail along this way. Alright, that one's on there. Alright, good. Good. Don't fall. Don't fall. Good. Don't worry about it. It works. We're not doing this again. Um, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to tighten the rails and flip the motherboard at the same time. I mean, if it's attached onto the rails, it should be fine. It's just the motherboard. It's just that I have the cooler attached to it, but yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I do this. Just give me two seconds, but it will work. Actually, actually, this isn't correct because if I install the motherboard to it, I don't have the rails screwed into the exact position that they're supposed to be, and then the other rails are still moving around. So that's tricky. That is tricky because you can't get the position correct without doing that stuff first. So that is that is tricky. Okay, so if I don't move anything. Alright, so I'm going to just move that perfectly, and now I'm going to screw in these actual rails in their exact positions, like super, don't, don't do that, yeah. don't, don't move it like I just moved it. I should have used one hand to hold it really tight, and then the other one to move it, shouldn't have done that. My fault. Wow, I moved everything like over just a little bit. Wow. Let's see if I can at least do this last one properly. No, I moved everything over just a little bit. It's fine.
idea where the screw fell from. Oh, that's actually not good at all. Wow. Mm. One of one of the rails fell. And one of the motherboard things are out of the way. I just need to touch this. this. Oh wow! Two of these fell off. Wow. I guess I didn't screw them in properly. Okay. It's a good thing I saw that now. Alright, you know this is kind of tricky actually. It's not listening to me. Okay. That bottom part is tight. It can't move. This one is missing a screw as well. And it's a bigger screw, but I have actually no idea where it is or it belongs to. Okay, so that's one of the rails. And this is the bigger screw that was missing from this bottom rail. You know the good thing about when things like this mess up so much? You learn so much now, you know, like, you can't mess up. screw these in like as tight as I can and then still slide it along the rail. Like it might scratch and stuff but I don't care. As long as it holds in place. screw this in completely can I uh, yeah yeah I can still move it even if it's screwed in like really tight it still has a little bit of play I should have just done that from the beginning and then I'll move the feet below on this end so it won't fall alright I don't want to mess with that GQ part yet this over here. This is meant to support ATX power supplies, so I can move this over a little bit to help support the SFX power supply. It's just not letting go. Yeah, that's, that's not letting go. One second. Actually, know if I can have it reach that far to even help. Making 
try, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. All those screws are on, this is on. And now we're gonna go back to trying to install the motherboard. Okay, that's that's tight, but it is what it is. They're all pretty tight. Yeah, you can still see it. Now, if I put it at the top left edge to help the SFX power supply, it would not be possible. The only one that I want to use as a guide is the bottom left, so this has to move down a little bit more. This has no space. So if the bottom left is a guide, we have barely enough space to clear that. Um, so bottom left is the guide. I just want just a Am I supposed to give it enough space to not hit the power supply bracket? Oh well. You're supposed to give it more clearance. It should have ample room for an ATX power supply, so like just enough. And if an ATX power supply took up that much space, it'd be fine. Alright, so it takes up that much space. That screw is good. Let's get the bottom rail perfect. Just one second. Okay, so bottom rail looks like it's aligned. It's just not tight. Now, if I can put something right below it to help hold it. Um, brain. This pen's my word. The pens are bigger, but it still, it still helps. So it helps me gauge the distance. And then okay, so that's God, chill, bro. The rubber on the gloves holds onto the motherboard. Um, you know, I have no idea why my headphones is falling out. It's not like I'm moving. Those two line up perfectly. <sighs> All right, we we got almost perfect on like a few of the screws, but those are good. Those are yeah, it's 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 pretty decent. All right, so it's just this pen one. How is it so off? How is it so off? Oh my god. Alright, one second. And now it won't move at all. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous.
Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two of the screws in. And then the other ones I'm going to try to push from underneath. And then just get them perfect. So that one's in. Honestly, you don't need all four anyway. It's not like I'm running around with this. But I want to get all four in. Push this over a little bit. And that one goes in. Fine. Okay, cool. And now this last one is off by just a little bit. I'll zoom in right after this and show you. Just have no idea how to reach it without using the power switch. I rest the rad on this side, and the rail on this side won't damage anything. So the thing that fell and moved just now is not important at all. If I rest it like this, what happens? And then this is wobbling a lot more than I'd like it to move. And the motherboard is coming off. This is the pressure BIO tubes. And it's not screwed on this last screw. So how far off is it? It's off by... Well, I mean, it's screwed in everywhere else besides this one part, so it's not off by a lot. It's off, but it's like tiny bit, a smidge. Just, I have no way to uh, move it. on man just all right that's 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 fine power supply is fine these ends is fine this rail still has I thought I moved it over but I need to move it over a little bit more just move over please just move over a little bit Yeah, it's perfect, it's perfect. Now I know when I take off this motherboard and I have to put a new one on, it's gonna give me the same issue because I didn't hit the, uh, the positioning like perfectly. But um, yeah, I mean that part's done, so this is still on. This has a little bit of play, so I can screw this on completely. Actually, the play might be from the bottom, so we can screw this in completely now. That's in tight. That one's in tight. The play is less now. Yeah, it's solid. Um, this part that is actually meant to support the power supply, it doesn't even reach, so there's actually like no point to it. Uh, 
trying to see if I can try to screw it into place from the bottom. Just so if I ever attach an ATX power supply, which I probably will. I have a backup bronze just in case, you know, if you think that your power supply died or you know you're having an issue, just so you can troubleshoot. Alright, so that's there, that's that's good. What else is there? The motherboard is in fine, it doesn't move, that's good. Next step really is just does it show you how to install a graphics card? Yeah it does. Uh, we'll see we'll see how this goes. But yeah, I would just let the AI out. Mm, my bad man. Here, I'll hold this up before I start installing like actual stuff. So basically the issue was if you can see that silver screw right there um, I was trying to install it but the rails keep moving uh, and you can see it there that rail over there it's just it kept moving like a millimeter off and I got it perfectly so obviously I'm happy uh, it does give you like an extra for like almost everything I have no idea what this is for it didn't it didn't say anything Let's let's just verify that real quick. That part is meant for I actually don't see anything in there for it. Hmm. Alright, this red is fine. Let's see. Just have that rest on this side. What would be cool is if I use the L brackets that are meant for the hard drive to hold the AIO on the side. Because if I attach the rails, right? It's not zoomed in, right? Okay. Can you see it over here? Yeah, you can barely see it. One second. If I... You know what? I'll do that, actually. I will. I will. So, if you use the L bracket, and it attaches onto a rail, I mean, how would it not hold... If I put a screw through here, through here, to hold this rat up, and I could just hold it up on the side like this. Actually, well, I'd, I'd flip it like this. Tubes get like that. Yeah, that's actually really cool. I can do this. I can get this to work. Okay, I'll, I'll do that step last because it's not necessary. I don't really mind if the rat rests somewhere. The graphics card part I want to be careful with. I want to snap my graphics card. Also, I need it perfect because those big heavy GPUs are coming out soon. Alright, so... I guess I would just put this in tight enough then I have to unscrew these two parts so you have to put the GPU and then you gotta screw this on okay Grab yourself a graphics card. It's not zooming. Right? Yep, no, it's not. And just snap it onto your motherboard. And we have a problem. Okay, one second. Definitely need to unscrew these rails. Because those don't go where they are. So if these go like this, it goes in right between here. Oh shit, shit. So this would slide into place. So let's click the GPU in first. Is it in?
Wait, is the foot in the way so I can't? I can't tell if literally only half the GPU. Yeah, only half the GPU is in, the, in there because the foot gets in the way. So, one second. I can't even reach the PC so I still have to disconnect it. Okay. So, I think only half of it went in, to be honest with you. So this was interfering, if you can see that. This can't rest all the way down because his foot's in the way. So, let's see if I can just slide the foot over. I would have never expected the feet part to be so difficult. Overall, building the whole thing is pretty easy. It's just a matter of, uh, you yeah. know, making sure everything is in the proper position where it should be. But overall, for 40 bucks, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this over 3D printing something that's similar. But then again, if you 3D printed something that was similar, maybe it would have came out like a lot better. So I moved the feet to right underneath the, uh, the D2 that is holding up the actual motherboard. So if I screw it in over there, that's a lot of play and it should not be moving that much. So clearly I didn't screw in D2 where it's supposed to be and my motherboard's attached to it, so that's not good. One second, let me just screw that in. That's not good at all be a little bit tricky because there's no way I can do this. I need like super tiny hands. Yeah, if I had the electric one, it'd be pretty nice right now. This rad's in the way. That one's in. That one's in tight. That one's in tight. I don't think I screwed in all of these tight because I was still moving the motherboard around. So let's screw all of these in like completely solid. As you can see, the rails are still kind of wonky. But it is what it is. Probably not going to lift this up again, so I'm just going to make sure that these are perfect. That one's got way more give than it should. I don't think it really matters if I put the feet like this or this but I'll put it closer here. And same thing with this one. If I put it closer to the edge, it'll help that pillar D2 as a support. That's what I did on this one. I'm not sure if you're supposed to put the feet like that. And actually, they don't. They put the feet right below where the GPU goes. 
but I had an issue, so. Well, alright, this can move. This can move. Alright, let's try it again. Try it again. Put the motherboards in. Motherboards in. Properly looks. It's in solid. It's in solid. Far move, so that's good. Foot's there. And now we'll mount the GPU again. I gotta be doing something wrong, man. I think. Hold on. I can't tell if this acrylic is meant to help hold it up and then you screw it in. But I don't think it's, the GPU clicks on the right side. I don't think it's all the way into the PCIe slot. all the way and move this acrylic over these bars can't get in there this is there these are tightened these are tightened and no um no that's that that's in it that doesn't need to go in anymore all right guess it was just me all right I'll screw these in, and then I'll screw it into the side. Yeah, but I feel way more comfortable doing this than the cardboard box. It's only forty dollars, so yeah. Now I just have to screw in this side part with the acrylic. That definitely rotates the GPU a lot more. It's moving that much, it's moving the PCI slot too, right? It has to. Card probably won't come out now because I have it on the rails. Okay, it did. All right, now click into place. Now that's in all the way. This is how I want it. Now I locked it. The only thing is, for it to get this low, how I want it, I don't think it's possible with the feet. GPU looks solid. Like it's 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 good now. Yeah, that's good. The feet, the feet have no way of going. It can. I don't know if it was designed this way.
I'll explain what I'm doing right after this. I'm basically just trying to get the feet on the part where the end of this ITX motherboard rests. And if I can get that properly on that D2 pillar, and I'm not really worried about this D2 falling because for some reason they, they think you don't need another L bracket to uphold it, but in my opinion it, it does, so because it keeps tipping over. I have it in tight, but it still it still has so much play. On the other end it doesn't move, but on this end it still goes up and down. Alright. I'm gonna tighten it now. GPU's in place, this I'm actually gonna tighten. That's tightened. Now if I tilt this over, I need to screw in the feet perfectly. That's in, good. Ooh, and that is resting pressure on the GPU. So let's just move it this way. And same thing. On the pillar. Yep. I move this over. This is here. Okay. Um. Two hours. Two hours. Fast forward. Don't have to sit through all. <laughs> don't. Don't. Only if you're struggling. Then it's fine, you know. And then you can still fast forward. But I think every this feels solid. You don't really want to wiggle everything but I just I just want something yeah it's it's not bad it's not bad I'll rotate it I'm definitely gonna try mounting the AI onto the side I think it'd be cool all I gotta do is go like this fans SATA cable it's fine and if I mounted uh, the GPU, it's too big. I can mount. I can't mount the screw on the leftmost edge. Can you see that over there? Yeah, all the way on this side. But I can mount like probably two over here. One like here, one over here. I can still get it to work. Two big bends like this, but I can attach the power supply cables for literally everything. And then boom. Yeah, I can get this to work. And then have the AIO run off the side like that. I'll do it right now. I probably have AIO screws somewhere. Honestly, hold on, I'll try it with the screws that it comes with. Actually... I gotta think. I don't wanna mess with the threading if these screws are different than the radios. Not sure where I put my radiator screws. One sec. Okay, I'm back. So basically, I hooked up the power cables as you can see. I'll move this a little bit closer so you can actually see. That, that look better? Barely. Alright. So I got some M3 X20 fans uh, screws for the radiator. And then um, what I'm going to do is install these two you know into the radiator and then from there 
I'm going to attach the L bracket to, what are these called, P1s, yeah, to the side. And I just have to use a number five, two number fives, should work, and then two number two threes. If it works, that actually is not what it's intended for, but it'd be cool. So you guys can try that out. Only if you want to, you know, you don't have to do it. If you're worried about damaging your radiator or something, don't, don't bother, bro. Don't bother. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the screw on one of the ends. I don't think it really matters. And then, same thing, fasten. I had the flux lights on before, so maybe you probably couldn't see anything, I just realized. So, I mean, it's the end of the video now, so it doesn't really help too much. But I don't think the lighting was terrible. But obviously right now is way better. Okay, so slide this on like this. That's good. Slide it on like this. That is good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it. Not all the way, but just enough so it can barely slide. Great. Same thing with this one. just so it can barely slide. Now it doesn't come with any other P1s so I can't attach them to confirm, you know, you're gonna have three supports for this. So we're gonna grab one of the screws, put it through this, put it onto the rad, I think I would have made it a lot easier is if I just screwed it into the rod and then I tried getting this to work. I'm gonna do that now. One second. Same thing with this one. It's definitely a lot easier to just screw it into the rod and then try to do this.
that's really unfortunate. That pretty much that whole screw hole, it's just stripped. It doesn't even hold. Huh. That that actually kind of sucks. Like a lot actually. Shit! 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 Calm down! Calm down! I don't know how far it can go in before it uh, pokes through one of the radiator fins and then causes a leak, so that's why it isn't good to shove it in all the way. But this screw pretty much just goes in all the way, so I mean, if it leaks, it leaks outside my case, so we shall see. We shall see. Now, unfortunately, due to the AIO tubings, um, I actually cannot slide on I'd have to unmount the cooler and then remount it to get that to work the way I just did it. Let's see if I can get one of them on without having to do this again. I'm just, I'm just not getting the angle right. One second. Okay, so I'm not doing that idea anymore. Uh, it's, it's not worth it. I don't have the proper screws to do it, but the idea would work. I just don't have the proper screws. These screws are too long and too thin, and I'll cause damage to the radiator. I do not want to do that because uh, I have to use it obviously in the future. So basically the issue I was facing is you can mount it onto the rails, I just don't have the proper screws. So if I had the uh, proper screws that go into the radiator, right? And then they were like, honestly just 10 millimeters. If, if to get this to work perfectly, what I could do is I could just cut the screw. So I have enough actually in that right there. All I'd have to do is just done unscrewing. Okay, hopefully, hopefully today. Right there. So, if if I took this and I just cut it in half, and then if I attach, it should work. Honestly, I could do that right now. <sighs> do I want to? Do I want to? I'm gonna be honest, I don't care. Like, I could mount it like this on the side and it would be cool, but I just, it just I just don't care, no. No, I don't. But then it'd be like a full little thermal take P3, whatever, you know. I'm gonna be honest, I, I'll just order the proper screws. I don't wanna do that. I say that, but I'm probably gonna do it tomorrow. It's been a while. It's been a while. I want to go eat. I want to go live my live my life. I want to turn on this computer. <laughs> oh man. No, but seriously, like the graphics cards that I wanted to buy wouldn't fit. Like that's why I did this. Um, the what is it called? The Founders Edition 3090 is 313 millimeters in length. That wouldn't fit in my case. The Strix 383090 or whatever, right? It's 318.5 millimeters in length. That would not fit in my case. I sold my Strix 2080 to get a Stri uh, what is it? This EVGA 2080 to run a Ghost this one build for like a year, and like, you know, it was great and I was grateful. But like, you can't run a Ghost this one anymore. All right, listen. If, if you want a graphics card that isn't, you know, something that was already out two years ago, okay? Like, you don't don't play yourself, okay? A thirty seventy, congratulations, buddy. You just got performance that the top end had two years ago. So, I mean, yeah, you might have a little bit better ray tracing. Fantastic, right? But like, you know what I'm talking about. If I was really willing to go for 
hardware that was two years old, like, you know, from the top end down, I would have a Velka, I would have a K39, all right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a bigger build. The whole SFF thing is super dope and it's great, but I would want the best hardware you can get for the top end and then you can smush it into the smallest thing you can. I mean, go look up Project Velocity. That is literally the whole point, right? It was called Project Velocity. It's made by the guy who made the NK. I mean, the um, not from Concentrates, made uh, the S4 Mini. He made that. Go watch the video. And he had a 2080 Ti, and I think the case was like, all right, man. I I think it was six liters. I I think it was. I just remember it was like 4.5 to around 6.8 or 6.2, something like that. But yeah, he, I don't have that type of machinery, but that was amazing. Yeah. But the thing is that now look at it, it's like, would he be able to do it now? Yeah, probably if you undervolt the new cards. Uh, I think if AMD's new GPUs are good, if Lisa didn't lie, to investors and RDNA 2 really is 50% improvement per watt I mean that's great I mean that, that's really the only thing you're going to be putting in a ghost on air otherwise even water cooling trying to cool a 3090 and a 9900k or obviously not like a 3900 or 3950x that should be fine but trying to have an Intel CPU that draws like 200 wish watts forget Rocket Lake and a 3090 on a single 240 rad and a T1. For, forget that. Even a ghost, forget that. Like, that's that's not happening, bro. If you're undervolting your parts that much, like, no. No. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll perform well. It's just, I don't want to pay a lot and then have to lower the performance of my cards. Half the fun is getting the top end whatever cards and then overclocking him as much as you can. That, that's what's fun. That's the fun part. So yeah. I guess if you see this on a test bench or whatever and then I actually do screw in the screws like this and set it up, then you'll know that I did the screw thing. But for now, I mean this is pretty much it. This is it. I'll pack up the rest of this later. Um, the little instruction manual is really nice. I really do like this. This this is this is uh I mean for forty dollars it ain't bad. I mean think about it. If I had an air cooler, right? Obviously my ninety nine hundred K is not gonna be cooled by an air cooler. But if I put my Noctuel twelve S on this, right? And I let's say I had Zen three that, that honestly should cool it. Uh, by the way, just so everybody knows, the best sub 50 millimeter air cooler is an AXP 90 full copper. No questions, no debate, done. The best sub 70 millimeter air cooler is an AXP 100 C65 full copper. End of discussion, done. So, anything else, unless you're trying to fit the L12S or the L12 whatever Ghost S1 edition cooler in your Ghost because the fan is 20 millimeters away from the side panel and you don't want turbulence with the fan right up to the edge yeah that's nicer but if we're talking performance here and it fits it sits those are the best coolers don't ask me about sub 40 or 37 millimeter i have no idea that's i haven't bought a belt i don't know uh, i was thinking about it you know but I, I didn't expect gpus to get so hot so we're going the opposite direction um I mean, just look at the MSI Gaming X Trio. If I wanted it, like, <laughs> dude, it's 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 335 millimeters in length. This GPU, I'm pretty sure, is a reference-based GPU. Hold on, let's let's just spin this. It's pretty solid now, yeah, honestly. Yeah, I can I can rotate this around. I mean, it's just it's just the AIO is kind of you know, it's not beautiful. It's not beautiful. Um, but look at this card. This card is about 278 millimeters, I believe. Um, 280, it, that's that's what reference was. Now think about this. I had another 22, like maybe 20 millimeters. 
Okay. Now we're at like EVGA for the Win 3. And I think also with the new 4 to Win 3 for the 2080 Ti and the 3090. And now we add another 18 millimeters to that. Now we're at the Strix 3090. 335 millimeters in length. My, my, my hands are off camera. 335 millimeters in length is the MSI Gaming X Trio 3090. Bro, I, I mean, it's probably not this much, but it probably is this much. And th this is massive. And this is two slot. That's three slot. You understand? You're putting a Chungus in a PC. I uh, What ITX case fits it? I mean, it does. It fits in a Slager console. And it fits in a PATX. You aren't going to struggle to fit it in a PATX. PATX can support up to a 370 millimeter GPU. But this... I mean, the, I mean, my bad, my bad. The Slager console, he said it can fit a 335 millimeter length GPU, but like that is the max, so it's gonna be touching the edge. Um, I think it'd be cool because you can have a 70 millimeter air cooler, the AXP 100 C65, and that should cool a Zen 3A core. That'd be that'd be a cool console. You know, if I had one monitor and then I didn't have it on arms, I'd put my monitor right on top of that. It'd be cool. Um, yeah, but I don't need that because 240 AIO is basically a DH15. Now, obviously not with slim fans. Maybe the fans on max. I don't know. I'd have to run a test. But I don't, I don't need I don't need to dissipate around 240, 300 watts anymore. You know, I don't. I'm not gonna have this Intel stuff no more. I'm not going Rocket Lake. Who who, who wants an Intel chip that's like 300 watts and it's almost double what no it's not double but I mean if you really do run a 3950X on eco mode it's it's substantially less power substantially less anyway this is pretty much the ITX test bench built um, I'm moving it around slowly rotating it around this is what it looks like. If you spend forty dollars on Amazon, this is what you get. It works pretty good, as you can see. It took forever to build it. I think I have all my power cables plugged in, GPU, SATA cable for the AIO, the fans, the twenty-four pin. Mm, what else? I mean, honestly, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks. And bye-bye. Peace.